Alrighty, let's talk about lending. So one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is because I see people assume way too much. Oh, and there's a puppy. Hello, puppy. That is Harley for those who follow me. Uh, so let's talk about lending because I find too many people make the assumption that they simply cannot uh, borrow money until they're in a job uh, for X amount of time. So let's go deeper into how do the banks judge all of our different forms of income, all right? So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, full-timers, part-timers, casuals, contractors, business owners, dividends, uh, and rental incomes from tenants as well. And actually, we'll talk about super as well. So let's talk about how many days into particular jobs do you need to be in. So first of all, believe it or not, when it comes to uh, full-timers, technically, there are quite a few lenders out there who will accept literally a contract of you starting a job. So you don't even have to have started the job yet, but they want to see when you're going to start it as long as you have a, a contract of offer. Um, and then again, a lot of other lenders will allow you to lend money literally from day one from you starting the full-time job. They like it. The banks are like, yeah, that's so certain, right? Um, then, so that's usually... Again, from contract, so a week or two weeks out from you starting, or tip, most of them will then at least um, allow you to borrow money from day one if you're starting the job. Let's talk about part timers. So just for context as well, there's also there's over 440 lenders. This is why it's critical to have a broker. I think it's really dumb to just go to a bank directly. Like, why would you just go to one bank and ask what one bank will give you? We can go to a broker, and most brokers also probably should give this to context as well. So most brokers in Australia have a panel. Uh, of of lenders on their panel. So they have to basically like sync with them and and, and be approved to refer people uh, for their loans. On average, most brokers in Australia only have about 30 to 40 lenders on their panel out of the 440. So this is another reason why you need to make sure that the broker that you're using is quite niched in the area that you want to go into simply because uh, different banks will judge you very, very differently based on your income, based on your incomes, and therefore you need to have a broker who's aligned to the strategy of what you're trying to follow. So, for example, in Australia, most brokers are, are, are familiar and draw up loans primarily for owner occupiers. I would say there's only literally five percent of brokers in Australia. Now, I am making this up. However, this is based off me literally grabbing contacts and contacts into contacts and contacts for years um, and saying, okay, what proportion do you do that on? There is has been some history, but I haven't um, got an update on that data. Anyway, there's roughly about only 5% of brokers actually focus on loans specifically for investors. And so because different banks are going to judge you differently, why on earth would you go to a broker whose time is going to be uh, wasted, let's just say, on loans for owner occupiers when those loans and the terms and conditions of those loans are completely relevant for you if you're going to be an active and especially if you're coming into my world we want to be an active property investor getting at least you know five or seven properties or something um you need a, a niche broker right because then they're focused on the terms and conditions and they know all the little rabbit holes and the loops and the tips and tricks and how they're going to judge you based off you being an investor based off the income that you've got coming in so I should have, uh, so there you go, a bit of context there, I should have said that at the start. Okay, now for permanent part-timers. For permanent part-time, uh, you typically need to be in a role for at least three months. But again, there's a very, very, very small amount of lenders who will actually lend from you from day one. Uh, the reason being is because obviously it's a bit more smaller. But again, permanent part-time, as long as it comes with the contract, the banks like you more because it's permanent, right? Same as full-time employees. Now, we've got uh, the next one is casual or contractors. So with casual employees, uh, or actually, I need to also talk about bonuses. Okay, so if you're a full-time or part-time um, income and you have a base salary, but then let's just say, for example, you have bonuses or overtime that's not a part of your uh, permanent contract. So for example, I have a lot of truck drivers who come to me, right? And their base mate wage might be 80 grand for the year, but because of the type of hours that they work, they end up fucking closing out $140,000, $160,000 for the year. With bonuses, most lenders, again, will shave off about 20 to 40% of that. So they'll consider 100% of your income, but then they might, of your bonuses, they might 
uh, shave off 20, 20, 40 percent of that. Same thing happens with casual income earners. So with casuals, you typically have to be in your role for about, for again, most lenders, six months consistently the same income. Then we grab an average of that six months. Then for most lenders, they'll shave off again 20, 40 percent. Some lenders who are quite yucky to work with, they might shave off 60 percent of your income. So that's the reason why for some people, that's the reason why for some people, I would recommend them, I recommend for casuals or contractors, if they're like really hungry and they're really focused on property investing and it's something they want to do in the, in the short, in the short term, uh, sorry, in the long term, but short term, they're really stuck on uh, lending. I'll say like, let's go to the broker and let's just say, Hey broker, what can I borrow now as a casual? And then you go speak to the, your um, employer and maybe then change over to permanent part-time. Then how much could I borrow? And you typically see that there's a big uplift in terms of borrowing because the bank just likes you a bit more because they won't shave off some of your income. Now, also for those who receive bonuses, a lot of people come to me um, and when I ask them, you know, do you receive any other bonuses? They're like, oh yeah, but it's only like an extra 20 grand a year. But like, you know, they might be on a wage of say 150K. That extra 10 or $20,000 in bonuses, again, we some lenders might accept 80% of that bonus. And that could be a huge difference in terms of uplifting your brand capacity as well. Now, for those who are contractors on paper, so there's a lot of people out there and Australians out there who are, I personally think contracting is probably one of the best ways to get paid if I was an employee and also for property investing, believe it or not. I'll tell you why. Number one, well, first of all, as a contractor, typically you're getting paid way more money. Um, and as long as you're timing it well, so as long as if you're, say, for example, on six monthly contracts or 12 monthly contracts, as long as your bank can see that you're going after another contract, you've got another one drawn up, um, we can keep using it back to back and therefore it's kind of treated like full timers. So I think contracting is, is the way to go. If I was to ever go back to employment, um, and not be a business owner, I would go directly into contracting for sure. And that's me being an active property investor, always making sure the number one thing I'm focusing on is how will the bank judge me and when will they give me money? Okay, let's talk about business owners. For business owners, typically these days, it used to be 24 months, but now there are a lot of lenders out there who will borrow to you within just 12 financial months. So from 1st of July to 31st of June the next year, they and then you then have to have the cut your, um, your tax return completed. In saying that, you don't necessarily have to have the tax return absolutely completed for us to run numbers. Your broker could typically just use the draft of your tax return. So maybe you start working on it with your accountant and then maybe you're just like, I need to work out if I've been able to uh, make, an, if I've made enough money or if I'm claiming too much or claiming too, too much or too little in terms of my tax return. I've got an entire segment on this, another video just for business owners. So if you are a business owner, please reach out to me. Um, there's a lot more depth that I go into um, and I can send you another video specifically on lending for business owners. All right, whilst we're talking about business owners, let's talk about dividends. So some people have a trust uh, or they've simply just got sh like shares, like, like uh, investments, say for example, in shares, or maybe they've got a trust that's paying them out. Very similar to business lending. Again, we need to have 12 financial months. If you've just got dividends coming from a um, um, an, an investment and it's just going directly into your personal bank account, we need to claim this at tax time. So don't forget, the only thing that uh, banks will consider is money that you're telling the ATO about. <laughs> uh, can't, banks will not accept money that you not, have not formally lodged with the ATO. Let's talk about super and then I'll get to rental income. So super, this is fun. I like this one. So again, I have an entire video specifically just on super. If you want to know the pros and the cons to that or to work out how much you need for uh, lending, utilizing your super. Again, I have two other videos I can send you for that. Please reach out to me and I'll send you those links directly. So superannuation is really cool and it's a fun topic. And the reason why it's fun for me is because superannuation, the lending for this does not require you personally to have income and it also does not uh, require, it doesn't uh, judge you like your personal income. So say for example, you're riddled with debt in your personal income or you're stuck on lending money inside your personal income, trusts, because it's a completely different entity and you're, sorry, super, because it's a completely different entity, 
They treat that entity as if it's completely separate, like they treat it like a business all on its own, which is really cool. So if you have a nine to five job and you consistently have money being paid by your employer into your super, they look at that employer as its own uh, business, let's just call it. So therefore, a lot of people who might be stuck on lending in their personal names, most of the time they might be able to borrow money inside their super, right? Now, the thing is with super, there's a, a much a lot of different things. I'm not going to go into the details of the outside of lending. However, you know how I said at the start of this video, there's over 440 lenders, right, in Australia. With super, 90% of them gone. So at this given moment right now, it fluctuates every year because there's some lenders that come in and then they're like, oh, it's too risky. We don't want to lend to super. So at the moment of filming this in the middle of 2024, there's roughly about eight lenders. That's it. Sometimes it changes all the way down to two. Sometimes it goes back up to 10, but sort of within that range. The reason why there's such few lenders in Australia for super is because it's a lot more riskier for them to lend. And the reason why is because technically, because of the way that super is structured using bear trusts, it's easier for you to run away and not pay the mortgage. Um, and get away with it. And so for them, it's a lot harder for them to come after you. Um, and also they can't take out insurance on you either. I have, I that was the last thing I did here a couple of years ago. I don't know if that's been updated if there's insurance companies out there now for, for uh, lenders. However, that's the last thing that I heard. So if you're someone who's currently stuck on lending inside your personal name, super might be the option. Again, in the middle of 2024, I'd say the minimum amount that you would need inside your super, and this can be combined with up to four other people. So maybe you and your spouse want to combine your supers together. Right now, I'd say about, an, uh, this is scraping by, but about $160,000, $170,000 um, is what I would accept to be able to buy a property right now inside the top 100, uh, inside the top 1% suburbs for growth, about $400,450 purchase price. Okay, let's talk about the one that I feel like most people will be asking about, which is rental income from your properties. So very similar to the casuals and bonuses, uh, majority of lenders out there will typically shave off 20% of the rental incomes that you get. Some of them will shave off 40%. There are some out there who will consider 100%. So it ranges between 60 and 100% of the rental income. So whenever somebody comes to me and they're really tight on borrowing, and let's just say you've got one or two investment properties already, and you wanna increase your borrowing capacity. The easiest way to actually increase it would be to actually go get a permanent part-time job and lock one in for three months. It would be easier to do that and you would have an instant sort of uplift on your borrowing capacity to compare to you trying to get more money from your tenants. Now in saying this though, every dollar counts. And speed really counts for the first five to 10 years of your wealth. So one of the things that I teach my clients is around making sure that you're always charging the top dollar that you can in that area, not overcharging, but whatever the average is, let's just say you could rent something between $500, $500 a week to $520. I would always be making sure that I'm charging at least $520. We can talk about ethics later on. I have, again, I have another video on that. I personally believe on treating this like a business, which means don't compete on price, compete on customer service. I'm physically okay sleeping at night, charging the most, charging the higher level of that bracket um, in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And as a response to that, I then charge, I then, sorry, provide a high quality service, meaning uh, I make sure that whenever there is some sort of maintenance bill, I get it fixed straight away. I don't fuck around. If the toilet's broken, I'm responding to that email soon as I see it, and usually within a 12 to 24 hour window, like responding to it. Um, and I have given my property managers the okay to go ahead. If they can't get a hold of me with anything urgent within 24 hours, they've got to go ahead to spend five, up to 500 bucks straight away um, if I don't respond. So just back on the timing thing and the speed thing, it's so critical to go as hard as you can for the first five years of your wealth building. And when I was younger, it's all about collapsing time. And so when I was younger, I had a full-time job. I was getting paid bonuses and I would also take on overtime as much as I physically could at my job. I was lucky enough to have that option. If I didn't have overtime option, 
I can bet your bottoms dollar, I would have gone and gotten a permanent part-time job. And that permanent part-time job, you know, it might only be 20 hours a week. That 20 hours a week could make literally the difference if you're getting the next property or not. So there you go. Hopefully you learned a thing or two when it comes to lending. I would love it if you could please comment below the main thing that you took away and make sure you hit subscribe and click on the bell because it makes it easier for me to then be able to uh, consistently create this free